In this video, we're going to take a look at iClone's Curve Editor. Let's create a camera. We're going to create camera. Now let's change the name to camera underscore animation. Now we'll go to window and open up the timeline. I'm going to make sure the camera is selected and then click on the object related track icon. This shows our camera in the timeline. Now I'm going to click the little arrow here and turn on transform so we can see the transform keyframes. And I'll double click to set a keyframe at frame 354. Now we have two keys for the transform, but let's drag the end key to frame 439. Now that we have two keyframes, I'm going to go back to the first frame and change the camera position. This, of course, will make it so that the camera actually moves from the first frame to the end of our sequence. Now I'm going to go to frame 455 and just type it in here. And I'm going to move the camera so I can actually see a close up of the monster. Now, as soon as we have him zoomed in fully here, we're going to go to the small arrow next to the camera animation name and turn on the lens track. Now, I'll double click on the timeline to make a keyframe for the lens track. Then go to our previous keyframe and double click again. Let me zoom in and drag this to make sure it's in place. So now we have two keyframes for the lens track. Now we're going to go to the modify tab and we're going to change the field of view to 80 millimeter. And that's going to change the field of view on this key. Now we have this really fast zoom basically that zooms in on the monster's face. Now let's add a bunch of keyframes that we can adjust in the curve editor. So I'm going to just move slightly forward on the timeline and then go to the iClone interface and shift the camera position slightly. And this is so I can have a bunch of keyframes. Now I'm just dragging them so every other frame has a keyframe. Then I'll copy and paste those same keys to make even more keys. So you select with the left mouse button and then control C, control V for copy and paste. So now we have this shaking motion. Let's see what we can do with these keys inside of the curve editor. So I'm going to go to plugins, curve editor, curve editor. And you'll see curves that represent the animation that we've done. All objects position in 3D space is based on the position of the X, Y, and Z axis. Now we have position X selected, and this is the curve that represents the animation for the X axis. And I'm just grabbing keyframes here and cleaning them up. So now what we've done is set up the X motion to be a lot smoother. Now let's look at position Z. I'll zoom in on those same keyframes, and I want to give it a similar pattern of movement. So time is represented by the transition from left to right. And movement for the position Z is up and down. So now that I have multiple keys selected by left mouse dragging, I'm going to zoom in here and look at the curve. But let's scale these keys. I'll select them all and then hit the scale keys button. And you can drag these two green handles to scale the motion. Now I missed a key, so I'll deselect them and just grab that single key and adjust it. So what we're animating here is the camera shaking violently as the monster will be yelling. So I'll scale the keys again so the distance that it's traveling to each keyframe is shorter. And of course we can vary the movement by selecting a group of keyframes and moving their position in the curve editor. So just remember that time is represented from the left to the right. And then the position Z's movement positive and negative is based on its up and down position on the curve. I'm going to select all the keys in the timeline and then right click to go to the transition curve presets. I'm going to choose elastic start and sudden end. Notice how it changes the curve in the curve editor. Curve presets are a very handy way to animate and if you're new to animation they can be very helpful until you get used to the curve editor. Now on frame 581 I'm going to pull way out so we can actually see the action when the monster attacks. So as we go through this, I'm going to keep adding camera frames 
to move the camera to a visual point of interest. So here on frame 637, I'm going to reframe the camera to a more interesting view. So here's the sequence with all the camera keyframes placed. You can see our close up and you can see that we move the camera to keep the view interesting as the animation progresses. Let's make another change to this. I'm going to go to where the camera starts to shake. Zoom in. Select that keyframe. Right click. Go to the curve presets and select decelerate. Now I think we're done so we can look at the final sequence. After this video, you should be able to see that curve editing allows you to do incredibly advanced animation. It's worth your time to practice and get good at using the curve editor since it offers the highest level of control for animation.